Are you tired of working with robot simulations and you are missing maybe your interactions with the real robots? Or maybe you would like to provide access to your robots in the lab to all those students and researchers which are at present at home confined. In this video we are going to see how to connect remotely to your robots in your lab. The solution I'm going to show you, it's not based on establishing a VPN or doing a remote desktop, uh, kind of. So what we are going to do is to provide a complete solution that it will work as if your robot were connected to your actual Wi-Fi network here beside your own computer. So with this solution, we are going to be able to bypass any firewall, which is between your robots and your maybe your router at your lab and the router at the home of the student or the person who is going to access the remote robots. So first we are going to need to have a robot which is connected to the Wi-Fi of your lab. So that means that your robot has to be able to get out to the internet by doing a ping to for example google.com. In this case, we are going to use the excellent Rosbot, uh, Ros robot made by company Usarion, which is excellent for learning and practicing Ros. Thank you, Usarion, for letting us use your robot for this video. Very important that the robot has to have a Linux machine on board because the software that we are going to use requires a Linux operating system. So it could be also a Raspberry Pi with Linux on board that it also will work. Finally, you are going to need to have a ROS Development Studio development account. And the ROS Development Studio is a complete development studio for ROS on your web browser. And it is going to be the one in charge of establishing the connection from your development environment into your actual robot in the lab. Connect physically to your robot and use a terminal to issue the following commands. If config, this command is going to give you the IP address that your robot has in the Wi-Fi network of your lab. So this one, and this is the Wi-Fi identifier. Write down this value. Then execute the who am I command. This one is going to give you the name of your computer, the computer of the robot. Also write it down. We'll need them both later. Next, install in the robot computer the IoT server that will allow you to communicate through internet with the robot. Use the following commands to install and to make it start at boot time. Now reboot your robot computer. Once the robot has rebooted, connect back again to the robot computer and then issue the following command in order to check that the connector system is active and running. Now let's go to the browser and connect to the computer of the robot using the IP address that you have written down before and then connect to the port 3000. You should see a web page for configuring the connection with, between the robot and the development environment in the cloud. On this page, uh, select here the deb device name, which is already correct, and then press the turn off and then turn on. Now you can see that there is a, an address that appears here that is the robot URL. Then you have to select that and copy. You're going to need this data in order to connect from the development environment. Next, open in your browser 
and go to your ROS development studio. Now launch one of your ROS yets that you would like to execute on the robot. Now we are going to connect to the real robot by using the option here which is called real robot. Click on this option and then press the button connect to robot. After a few seconds you will see the following pop-up where you have to paste the information that you have taken from the previous screen. On the first one we have the name of the robot computer. And then on the second one, we have the robot URL that we have copied from the previous um, web connection. Then press connect. At this point in time, when you get this view on the menu, then you know that your ROS development studio is connected to the real robot. And actually, the computer in the real robot is acting as the master of the system of the ROS master. Now that you are connected to the real robot, you can, for example, launch a terminal here on the menu tools, shell, and then see the topics of the robot itself with the ROS topic list. So as you can see, we can see all the topics that are produced at the real robot itself. And of course, we have one topic for sending velocities to the wheels so let's go and let's publish for example on that topic and move the robot from here on the spot So what can you do right now? You can do anything that you could do with your robot connected to your own Wi-Fi, but remotely. For instance, we can launch our base and remotely see, visualize the robot data. So let's do it. Let's launch our base. And then in tools, graphical tools, we'll see the window of the robot. So now we can see here the data that the robot is capturing. So that's the real time um, laser on this side. And then here on this other side here, we can see the image. For instance, we can, for example, send another command to the robot to move it. We can use the turtle bot keyboard teleop so now we can move the robot around and see how the values change in real time So now you are ready to execute your code in the cloud environment, but see the results in the real robot. Remember that you can also connect by SSH from this panel to your remote robot and then manage from here as if you were inside the real robot. What is interesting of this approach is that you don't have to install anything on the student's computer. They can actually use any operating system and the connection will be handled anyway. Even from different computers, they can be able to connect to the same robot. The system itself prevents the interruption of the current user by another user. Even if this second user has the same ID, it will not be able to connect to the same robot. 
Now I would like to mention two drawbacks of this system. The first one is that uh, whenever you finish a session with one of the robots, then you will have to regenerate the ID of the robot. So two users cannot use the same ID, so it requires to be generated every time that a new user is accessing a robot. And second is that this solution requires to have a paid account at the ROS Development Studio. So thank you for supporting our job. Thank you. And that is all. I hope that this video helped you to move your students to practice with real robots during the confinement. And in case that you have any question, don't hesitate to put your questions on the comments below. So see you next time. Thank you.